through a meticulous documentation of the ecological variation among different habitats in a network of 4,000 small meadows in the Orland Islands, revealed that genetic and phenotypic variation persists through cycles of extinction, followed by re-immigration. A crucial question facing us today is how will a changing climate and extreme events impact the speed and direction of evolutionary change. A continuation of the study will give rare and valuable insight into how populations respond to temporal climatic changes that are occurring now. I had the privilege of first meeting Ilka Hansky when he was a PhD student and I was an undergraduate. So I knew him for nearly 40 years. And I do remember that his colleagues at Oxford, where he was doing his PhD, we were pretty certain that um, we were seeing a young, famous ecologist. And Ilka didn't let us down. His career has been quite spectacular in the contributions that he has made to many fields within ecology. He will be known for many things, but he will probably be best known for setting up one of the most iconic long-term studies in ecology. Uh, I think it's no exception, uh, it's, I think it's no exaggeration to say that this will go down in the textbooks as one of the most important studies that has been carried out in the field in the long term. And I think it is to the enormous credit of uh, Finland that its science funding bodies have supported this work over the 25 years or so during Ilka's lifetime. And I hope both, both as a memorial to Ilka, but because of the um, constant flow of exciting and important and internationally competitive science that it continues to produce, I do hope that this funding can continue from within Finland into the future. I think long-term ecological series are completely fundamental to understanding the dynamics of populations or species or ecosystems. I do think that the Orland metapopulation system is truly unique. It's the scale of the system. It's the ability to be able to study over a long period of time so many different habitat patches, so many independent or semi-independent networks of populations of the butterfly in these habitat patches. The ecology is so well understood, not just at the level of the butterfly, but at the level of the trophic biology of that butterfly, the parasites, the hyperparasites, the food plants, the climate. The whole system is geared to integrating many different data sets. And that is sheer power. And the longer the study goes on, the more um, features of that system are becoming better and better understood. These long-term studies are absolutely crucial if we're going to begin to meet the challenges that biodiversity have on this earth of ours. Uh, of course, you could conduct a similar study in some other archipelago, but what makes it unique is that the effort has already been started, and not just the depth, which is a certain number of years by now, but they also the breadth, which, by which I mean the number of students that have been participating in collecting such incredibly detailed data, including the, you know, collecting the organisms so that we can also do genomics these days. We know the ecology, we know the genetic side of things, and that really makes it unique. Uh, so it's a combination of situation and effort. And the longer it goes on, the more inference we can make. I mean, that is just, uh, it becomes more valuable every single year. What's unique about the system with Melatea kinksia in Holland is the scale of the undertaking. So uh, the number of different populations that have been surveyed on an annual basis and also the added detail that comes from looking at the, the other interacting species in that system. So I think uh, uniquely this system is one that, that is really precious for ecology and really should be maintained in the longer term. Uh, as time goes by we will see more and more questions that require uh, longer and longer timescales in order to, to, to be answered uh, properly. Uh, my biology students here in Oxford, in their first year, I tell them about 
uh, how populations are structured in space and I draw on uh, the long-term data from the Olin system to illustrate uh, metapopulation biology. In the second year I talk about how this theory has been applied in conservation biology um, and then in the third year I talk about some of the interesting uh, biological insights that have come from, uh, from uh, the metapopulation system uh, in Holland in terms of interactions between different species in fragmented landscapes and how climate change might affect population dynamics and how uh, in the longer term uh, species populations may evolve in different and, and perhaps uh, unpredictable ways in response to environmental change.